Hi, it's Ranger M, and I'm here at Earth Fest 2023, where there's over 50 different vendors all about nature, conservation, climate action, and just our Earth. So come on, let's go check out some vendors. Hi Marianne, thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. I'm so thrilled to be at Earth Fest and checking out all of the different vendors you guys have here today. Uh, I was just wondering if you could kind of tell us a bit more about Earth Fest, where it came from, and so on. Glad to have you guys uh, joining us today. Uh, we This is our second annual Earth Fest. Uh, we decided that it was time to start celebrating the work that people are doing in the environmental sector, and so uh, last year we held it at Victoria Park and we had great weather, but we thought we can't really tempt fate for <laughs> two years in a row. So this is a and perfect- And it true. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect spot to hold it because um, Dundas Place is set up perfectly for a festival like this and having the library as a partner and having all these kids activities here, it's just wonderful. City Plaza has room for like almost 100 exhibitors. So there's something for everyone here. And you're also a member of Climate Action London who is putting on Earth Fest, right? Yeah, we're one of the organizing groups. So there are a few key um, uh, people who are involved in planning this. We've been planning it since December. <laughs> and uh, it really um, has met all of our objecti uh, objectives. So I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about action, uh, Climate Action London as well. So we started when the city declared a climate emergency back in 2019, uh, knowing that the climate issue is such a big issue that it's hard to have a connection with um, what's going on sometimes with the city. So our role was really just to connect everyday people with what's happening at the city and what their plans are and, and just try to help people um, to participate and get connected. So uh, that we have in the past come up with, uh, have sourced grants to do projects like pollinator gardens and we uh, support a native plant sale that's going on right now. Is Climate Action London all volunteer based? It is, yes. Okay, so are you always looking for volunteers? We are always looking for volunteers. One thing that we've done in the past though is we um, have tapped into the Canada Summer Jobs Grants. Oh, okay. So last year uh, we had two students running a, a plant-based cooking course. Oh, cool. And we did it in partnership with Indwell, a nonprofit that provides housing for people with mental health challenges, often people who are without a home or stranded in hospital because there isn't a good place for them. Mm, so, okay. wow. um, so they're a vulnerable population and one that often is living on um, very low income and often don't have good cooking skills or access to quality food. So it was an opportunity to um, teach them some cooking skills in a plant-based manner, which helps the planet, helps their pocketbooks and their health, right? Yeah. Makes them healthier. So it's one of those win-win-win opportunities that we really love to see. Well, that's great. If someone wanted to learn more about Climate Action London and Greening Sacred Spaces, um, where would they turn to? Our website's climateactionlondon.ca. Uh, I also uh, put out a weekly newsletter if people want to know just in little bite-sized bits and pieces what the Climate Emergency Action Plan is all about um, and what different groups in the city are doing about it. It's a great uh, weekly newsletter to get a hold of. Perfect. So you can subscribe on our website. Okay. And uh, also Greening Sacred Spaces is under like a faith tab on our website. So okay. you can, it's a one-stop shop, climateactionlendon.ca. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I just can't wait to go check out some vendors. All right. Thank thanks. you. Hi, Graham. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm so happy to be at your booth here at Earth Fest. I was just hoping you could tell us a bit about yourself, um, Alice, and what you do for Alice. So my name's Graham, and I work with uh, Alice here in Middlesex County. Alice Millsex, we invest in farmers and ranchers to uh, provide ecosystem services that uh, benefit the entire community. So basically we want to pay them to uh, grow cleaner air, cleaner water, what we call ecosystem services, just like they grow corn, wheat, and soy, just like that. So we help to provide establishment costs for things like tree plantings, wetland creation, and tall grass prairies. So I say Alice, you say Alice, but what does it stand for? So Alice Millsex, it, or Alice, it originally started as uh, alternative land use services. So it's just uh, different ways to use the sort of marginal land that oftentimes isn't really producing for farmers. 
So we have maybe areas that are low laying that are often wet and can't produce crops most of the or part of the year or uh, just areas close to forest woodlots that don't get as much sun. So farmers really aren't uh, finding that the land is producing. So what we can do is we can go in and we can plant native uh, tall grass prairies or trees and uh, have them provide these ecosystem services that end up benefiting everyone around, not just the farmers. We're always looking for new projects. So uh, if you're a rural landowner and you have some farmland that you're uh, not happy with how it's producing or you're just looking to uh, give back a bit and provide for the rest of the community, uh, give us a call. If someone wanted to learn more about Alice, uh, do you have social media or a website that they could go to? Yeah, absolutely. We are Alice Middlesex on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and we are also at alicemiddlesex.ca. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Graham, for chatting today. Of course. Thank have you, Have a Emily. great day at EarthFest. Hi, Connor. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to stop by your booth here today at EarthFest. Yeah, we're so excited to be here. Perfect. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about See the Work. Yeah, so we're a partnership with Goodwill and Fanshawe. So we create one-of-a-kind sustainable clothing, accessories, pet products, and home decor out of end-of-use textiles that were donated to Goodwill that they couldn't use anymore. Is it just donations from London or is this a project like across Canada? So or? it's all the Great Lakes Goodwill. Okay. So it all comes down to the, the White Oaks Goodwill Center there. Oh, wow. And that's where we train and employ local people facing barriers to work to actually sew it all into these new products. Cool. And are you repping one right now? I am. This is our shack at Cocoon. Oh, Looking very, very nice. Specific. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. So obviously you employ people as well. So it's yeah. a great opportunity for a economy, obviously the environment, um, and society as a whole. That's great. Absolutely, yeah. What's the driving factor? Why do we have to kind of have programs like these? In fashion, especially, we are trying to tackle the issue of fast fashion, just overproducing, overconsumption. We're trying to make products that last and that you'll buy with intention to wear for a long time and take care of. As well as through training people, we can help our loading local community to give jobs, to give new life into business, and just to focus in on local business instead of buying stuff from all around the world and fighting globalization. Where can people find your clothes? So we have a website, okay. it's www.seetheworth.com. We're also in the Hyde Park Goodwill Boutique, Filthy Rabina, Purdy Naturals. And if you check our website for a full list of our, our partners and retail oh, spaces. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Check the website every Wednesday. It's Worth Wednesdays. We replenish oh. our stock with new stuff every Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah. And do you have social media at all? We or? do. We have Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Oh, perfect. Yeah, everything. Awesome. Well, make sure to check you out. Thank <laughs> awesome. you so much for chatting today. Thank you. Thank you for joining me, Susan. I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about why you're here today at EarthFest. Uh, yeah, I'm Susan Smith. I'm representing the Middlesex London Food Policy Council. Uh, we're a group of volunteers um, who all have something to do with the food system in the local area. Um, but we're, there's farmers and teachers and dietitians and, and people that really are just concerned about the local food system and trying to get sustainability on the map. We do a lot of advocacy with the government. You know, there, there's a lot of areas that we touch within the food system. And you have a lot of information to, here today. And I was just wondering, do you kind of run programming? Um, do, are you always welcoming volunteers? We're entirely volunteer based. So all the members on the council and the executive are all volunteers. But then the volunteers have volunteers as well. So we don't we don't really have um, programs so much, but we partner with a lot of different groups. We're partnering with um, Growing Chefs and the groups at the Grove. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, we really extend ourselves into the community. Could you tell us a bit about um, kind of what you're advocating for? You said getting sustainability on there. So is that kind of just looking more at locally grown food, organic food, stuff like that? Yes, all of that. Uh, you know, the, the, the Food Policy Council is kind of a different animal. Like bigger cities in Canada have food policy councils within their city. Um, we're a ward of the um, food bank, but we also run through uh, the public health unit. So if the public health unit and the food bank had a baby, it would be the food policy council. So we, we do work with um, food security, but not exclusively. We do work with sustainability, but not exclusively. Where could people learn more about the food council? Do you have a website? Do you have social media? Yeah, we're, we're pretty active on social media. We have a website too. We have a bunch of programs, not, not programs coming out, but uh, campaigns coming out. So uh, right now we're working with the local food champions. So we're trying to um, uh, recognize people that have a local, that are local food champions, either a restaurant or, or a growing group or just anybody that really is doing local food right. And we're going to highlight them on our website pretty soon. So you can look for that one coming up. That's oh, that's coming cool. Up pretty soon. Thank you so much, Susan, for talking to me and telling us a bit more about the food council that's here. Great. In Thanks Middlesex. for asking. Hi, Don. Uh, thanks for joining me today. It's a great day to be at EarthFest. Yes. I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about yourself and uh, the project you're here with today. 
Pollinator Pathways Project started about uh, maybe five years ago. There are a group of people in Kensington Village who got together and put in a garden out in uh, the area. So uh, from that, they started to say, well, we need to do more of this throughout London. So since then, we've been uh, trying to get to people to give them the information they need to be able to put in pollinator gardens in their own place. And over the last year or two, we've evolved into actually implementing some of that things. So what we really want to do is create a pathway through central London where there's not too much um, green space or not enough green space. Uh, there are a lot of people who have gardens, but uh, now we wanted to focus in on trying to get them to be, I think more of a pollinator garden. This year we uh, work with uh, the 13 community uh, associations that are in central London. Through them and through our own online uh, sources advertised that we would have a uh, free pollinator garden for them. And we were able to do that because uh, Lush Cosmetics provided us with a grant oh, wow. to be able to do that. So this will be kind of the first step we would like to eventually create pathways all through London. And I just wanted to ask, are you all volunteer based? Yes. Awesome. So are you always looking for volunteers? Always. I also just uh, to wrap up, I kind of wanted to see, uh, ask where people can get more information, maybe sign up if they're not coming here today. Um, yeah. Do you have a website? We have a website. Yeah. We, it's called uh, pollinatorpathwaysproject.com. Okay. So we have other things as well where we uh, have provided different types of uh, planter so oh, awesome. solutions that people can come to us and uh, order them. And uh, that's really where I got involved in initially. I, I really like to do some uh, building. Mm -hmm. I've got my own home workshop. So oh, this awesome. gave me a chance to build planters and bee hotels and butterfly houses to be able to uh, give people something to put in their gardens to continue to attract the pollinators. Well, thank you so much, Don, for chatting today. Okay. Um, and I can't wait to see where the Pollinator Pathway Project goes. Uh, hopefully all over the world. Hi, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us today. And I hear you're quite the big guy running two different booths today. Uh, well, yeah, I'm here with a lot of help. Um, <laughs> I, I, we do have a couple of booths. So I, I work at the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority. Um, but my wife and I also run Antler River Rally, which is a monthly cleanup group. So Miriam is here today <laughs> representing Antler River Rally, and I'm worth the uh, the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority. Well, let's start off with the Antler River Rally. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about that? Antler River Rally are primarily, what we do is we organize monthly cleanups of Dushkan Zibi or Antler River um, in garbage hotspots all over London, sometimes outside of London, but mostly in the watershed uh, in the um, in the London area. So, so we just put out a call on our social media. We let people know this is where we're going to be. We bring gloves, we bring picker uppers, we bring bags. Uh, we do a big safety talk to make sure that everyone's very safe when we do a river cleanup. And then we work together for a couple of hours. And then the city comes and picks oh, nice. up the garbage. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then we just, we do that. I say we do it monthly. Uh, but in recent years, we've been sometimes doing two to three or four cleanups per month. And you said they can find it on your social media. Can you tell us um, what it's called? Yeah, we're, so if you just Google like antlerriverrally.ca, mm -hmm. um, uh, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. Okay, And Perfect. Yeah, and uh, if you want to get on our, our uh, we have uh, emails on those sites. Okay. If you send us an email, we'll put you on the list, and then uh, you'll know. We, um, we'll send out, um, you know, reminders and information about when our next cleanup is going to be. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today, Tom. You're very knowledgeable, and I always enjoy conversations with you. Ray, and... Ray Jim, I love what you do. <laughs> I think you're the best, and thank you for uh, chatting with me. Thank you so much. Hi, Brendan. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so happy to stop by your booth here at EarthFest today. I was just wondering if you tell us a bit about yourself and Bird Friendly London. I'm a student at Western University, and I run a little grassroots organization called Bird Friendly London. We're actually part of a program called Bird 
friendly cities that's offered by Nature Canada. And we're all about helping people in the London and surrounding community uh, to understand birds, to engage with birds, enjoy birds, and most importantly, conserve birds in their habitat. What's happening to birds and why we need to conserve them yeah, and protect them? So we've lost a lot of wild birds in the last 50 years because of human activities. And fortunately, a lot of the problems that birds are facing are preventable, but it involves us changing our behavior and the way that we take up space. Um, we try and raise awareness of some of the leading causes of bird deaths in Canada and the United States. Um, Pet cats are a big one, of course, and so we try and gently educate people about alternative strategies for keeping a pet cat. Um, collisions with windows on buildings are another big one. Um, so we provide education, um, we provide tools for treating windows, especially on homes, and we also treat some of the buildings uh, in London that are known to be problematic for birds. And before we started filming, you were telling me about a program you're running, or the City of London is running, and it's offering different assortments of um, options people can put on their window. Yeah. And, and you said that um, they were, you were angling to start at low income so that there's different options for different community members in the city. Yeah. So there's a lot of different tools available for treating windows on buildings to prevent bird collisions, especially at homes. Most people think it's a tall building problem. It's not. It's mostly in people's backyards, especially if you have bird feeders. So there's a variety of tools available. Like this is feather friendly DIY tape. Um, you can leave a little grid of dots on the glass. When you peel off the tape, the dots stay behind. The City of London will be distributing a, a few hundred sets of these um, for homeowners. But we've also lined up, um, they're available for purchase in local green, greenhouses and bird feeding stores. And you, could, you said even one option, option was just drawing on your window. Exactly, so we brought markers and chalk pencils and we're basically teaching people, here's free supplies and here's how you want to treat your window correctly. People can go to your website, do you exactly. have social media or stuff like that they can yeah, follow as well? Yeah, we're on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We've got a nice Facebook group of over a thousand Londoners who care about birds. But all the info we've got is also at birdfriendlylondon.ca. Okay, well thank you so much Brendan for chatting with us today and Absolutely. telling us all about our birds. Thank you. Hi Asha, thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's a great day to be here at EarthFest learning all about the amazing organizations in the London and area. Yeah. I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here today. Yeah, so I'm Asha Supal. I am the Agri-Food Marketing Coordinator here at The Grove. Um, the Grove is an agriculture hub at the Western Fair District. So the Western Fair District is one of the oldest agriculture societies here in Southwestern Ontario. Um, we're getting back to our ag roots and we've created this community hub where uh, we're open to uh, agri-food businesses, uh, agri-food education, and we're really just teaching the community how to live a little bit more greener, sustainable, and uh, a greener lifestyle. And I saw you guys have some worm castings with you. Yeah. Is, do you guys, like, is that a program? Do you run other programs? Kind of, what do you? Yeah, so the Wormery is actually one of our um, members of the Grove. Uh, we have a worm farm at the Grove. <laughs> so we have um, a number of worm tables. They, we collect scraps from different elements of uh, the Western Fair District. So from the market vendors, from the Grove members, because some of them like to cook in our commercial sized kitchens. Okay. Yeah, and then so we take those natural food scraps and feed them to the worms, and then the worms do what they do, <laughs> and we get that natural worm casting and use it. Ooh. So at EarthFest, we just launched our at-home compost kit. So uh, we're teaching people to use their uh, own kitchen scraps and uh, yard waste at home to create kind of the castings that we sell. Uh, so it's really simple. It's a two layer kit and you just put your kitchen scraps in. We sell the worms with it and then the worms go up and eat the scraps and then you put that back into your garden. You mentioned something about Grove members. Is there a membership or just, um, was that just like volunteers kind of thing you were yeah, mentioning? Yeah, so it or? is a membership. You okay. could be a part of the Grove and rent out either office spaces, kitchen spaces or classroom spaces. Um, it's really different with other commercial kitchens. You do not need to sign a lengthy lease. Mm -hmm. You could do it a daily rate or a weekly rate. So anyone that wants to kind of elevate their at-home business. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. If um, someone wanted to learn a bit more about the Grove and the Wormery, uh, where th could they go? Do you have a website or yeah. social media? So they could go to www.thegrovewfd.com or follow us on socials, the same thing, uh, the Grove WFD. Um, and we have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, 
Oh, all perfect. The, all the things. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me today yeah. and telling me more about the Grove. Um, I can't wait to check out the Wormery uh, and maybe get myself some worms yeah. and stuff. So thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining me, Soraya. Uh, today here at Earth Fest, it's very nice to be here talking about all things Earth, the nature, and um, the city of London. So I was just wondering if you could tell us a bit about yourselves and what you're here with today, which I believe is your HELP program. Yes, so my name's Soraya and this is Maya. We're both members of the HELP program, which is a grade 10 program run through all of Thames Valley. And it's based at Westminster Ponds ESA in London. So I am from Tilsonbury, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I come here uh, to London every day, and it's for one semester. Wow. And we work on lots of projects. Uh, current one right now is the leader trap project, okay. which is where we put storm um, leader traps into storm drains. And leader traps are these mesh-like uh, devices mm -hmm. that go into storm drains, and they catch all of the garbage that go into storm drains. Wow. And then we're going to use that take inventory and oh, okay. yeah, and then see where all the garbage is coming from. And it's really cool to get out in your community and do all this work. Um, do you get a lot of feedback from your community when you're doing that? Do the people ask you lots of questions when you're putting like the traps in and stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. We also like walking on the trails, we come across a lot of people and we mm -hmm. talk to them about the HELP program. That's awesome. And yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the program? I really like the outside aspect and you mm -hmm. get to go outside and just the different learning because there's like no tests really oh, like you're wow. constantly just being assessed so it's not it's more relaxed mm -hmm. and it's not just a sit in the desk and do work kind of thing and there's lots of volunteer opportunities that come with it oh, nice. and even like some job opportunities because you make a lot of connections within the community and with a lot of community partners that's great so yeah. you would definitely recommend this to oh, yeah. other students that's awesome. Well, thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to go and check out your booths more. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so happy to stop by Nature London and get to know you and the organization a bit better. Well, thank you for stopping by. Awesome. What is Nature London? So Nature London is a local naturalist club. Our motto is to preserve and enjoy London. I think we've been in one of the oldest clubs in Canada uh, oh. since 1864. Wow! Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I apparently started as an insect collecting group, but oh. we've uh, morphed into many more things yes. since then. You have a lot of information here we for do. people. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's all local it kind is. of wildlife. It is, and we have a, an excellent website okay. that uh, if you just Google Nature London, Perfect. it'll come up and it'll give uh, people a real good idea of all the things that we do. Awesome, yeah. and I understand you have a membership program. We do, it's an annual membership. Uh, cost is $35 for a family, okay. and um, students are $10. Okay, so. and I wanted to highlight your book here because oh, actually yeah. I have this book. I have the yes. previous edition and I love it. It makes me get out and explore locally more often. Yeah. It gives me some background on areas and what you can kind of spot there and I, I love it. Yeah, so and we publish this ourselves. Perfect. And we have local people go around to all the natural areas, you know, within a couple, an hour's drive, hour and a half's drive of London. Uh, and they highlight, you know, where, where to go, what you can do there, what you see there. People can go to your website to learn more about exactly. yours, to get a membership and everything. Yep. Yep. We have a number of programs, lots of opportunities for volunteers. So if anybody's interested in volunteering, again, you can just go to our website. There's emails there that people can uh, uh, connect through. Okay, good to know that there's volunteer options. Yeah. For well, sure. thanks for chatting with me today, Stacy. I'm, I'm glad that we got to meet up and learn a bit more about Nature London. Well, thank you for coming by. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until next time, see you in nature. <laughs>